All right, so we're going to be going over the respiratory system now. The first subcategory on your term list is called the nasal cavity. And the first term is your nose. So this is going to be your nose right here. And then your nostril. And that is just going to be that whole round opening where it enters into your nose. So I'm just going around the outside right there. Next you will have to know your internal and external nares. The external nares is just going to be that air um, passageway going into the nostril right there, going up into there. And then the internal nares is going to be the passageway which lies underneath the stick right there. So it just refers to an air passageway. It's just going to be in this region right here. Next, we will go over the nasal septum. So that will be over on this other side. Your nasal septum is made up of three different structures. First, it's going to be that perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone right here. Next will be the vomer right here. And then after that will be your septal cartilage, which is right here. Next, we'll go back over to this other side on the bones, and we'll go over the nasal concha again. The first one is going to be your inferior nasal concha, right here. And that is actually its own separate bone, so inferior nasal concha. Next is your middle nasal concha, right here. And then the last nasal concha is your superior nasal concha, up here. Switching over to the other side again, we will go over the meatae. The meatae are just the spaces that air flow through. So the first meatae is going to be the inferior nasal meatae, and that's going to be inferior to the inferior nasal concha. Next, we will have the middle nasal meatae, and that is going to be inferior to the middle nasal concha right here. And then lastly will be the superior nasal meatae, and that is going to be inferior to the super na superior nasal concha. Next we will go over sinuses. So the first sinus in your lab manual is the maxillary sinus, which you can't really see, but it's going to be all within that maxillary bone, and that maxillary bone is right here. The next one is called your frontal sinus, and you can see that space right here in that frontal bone. That's going to be frontal sinus. And the last sinus you have to know is your ethmoid sinus, and that's going to be behind the nasal concha, so it's just going to be spa spaces within those nasal concha, and you can see that within here. Lastly, for the uh, nasal cavity you have to know nasal lacrimal duct and canal you're not going to be able to see that very well on this model but if you look down in here that is going to be your nasal lacrimal canal and um, just remember your duct versus your canal the duct has epithelium on it and the canal is just bone that's the only difference we'll be going over the pharynx subcategory of your respiratory lab. So the first one you have to know is called your nasal pharynx. Your nasal pharynx is going to be from the back of the nose right here down to the tip of the soft palate which is called your uvula. So that is going to be nasal pharynx. From that uvula to the base of the tongue is going to be your oral pharynx and then from there down to where the esophagus and the trachea separate into two separate pipes is going to be your laryngopharynx. Going to this other model over here the next structure you have to know is called your auditory tube or eustachian tube. Right here you can see the entrance to that passageway and that's going to go to the middle ear. We have gone over that already on other models. And then lastly, under the 
pharynx, you have to know the hard and soft palate. The hard palate is going to made up, be made up of that maxil maxilla right here. And then your palatine, which is that small bone right there. And then after that hard palate stops right here, the soft palate will start right here. And you can see that muscle right here in the back of the mouth. And it will continue down and then the tip of it will be called the uvula down here. The next subcategory will be called the larynx. So in that larynx, there's a bunch of structures we have to know. The first one is going to be called your false vocal cord. And that false vocal cord in here is going to be the most superior structure of those two vocal cords. So your false vocal cord is going to be made up of your vestibular ligament and your vestibular fold. The vestibular ligament lies underneath the vestibular fold. So make sure you watch out for how they ask a question. And both of them together are called the false vocal cord. The true vocal cord lies inferiorly to that false vocal cord right here. And the same goes for that. The vocal ligament is going to lie underneath the vocal fold and together combined they're going to be called the vocal cord. Make sure you get that straight in lab. Next, I'll put these back together. And the next term is called your thyroid cartilage. And that's this right here, and it's near the thyroid gland, but is not the thyroid gland. So it's just the thyroid cartilage. Next will be your cricoid cartilage. That cricoid cartilage is this next large cartilage structure. And that is the only cartilage that goes all the way around that larynx. And it goes all the way around the back and it gets large here on the back. So that's cricoid cartilage. Next I'm going to grab this other model and we'll go over some smaller cartilages. So the next one is called your corniculate cartilage. And that is this little tip of right here. It's also on this side, right here. Corniculate, it kind of looks like a corn kernel. And that is, and then inferior to that is your arytenoid cartilage right here. And that's this larger one right here. For the attachments of your false focal cord, it's going to be right in between that corniculate and arytenoid cartilage, so right on that line. And it's going to be um, anterior to it, so right here. And then for the attachment of your true vocal cord, it's just going to be on that arytenoid cartilage down here. Next will be the epiglottis. The epiglottis is going to be this structure right here, and that flaps down when you swallow to cover your glottis which is just going to be that space going down in here. So when you swallow food, the epiglottis shuts down like this and closes the glottis. The last subcategory in the respiratory section of the lab is going to be the lungs and trachea. So first we will have the trachea and that is going to be the windpipe. So right here on the tip of mine is going to be, tip of the pointer is going to be the outside of that trachea. On the x-rays, remember that that trachea is going to be a black space because it is an airway. And don't confuse that with your, um, with your esophagus because that esophagus is closed unless for a few instances. The next structures you're going to have to know are your tracheal rings and your annular ligaments. So your tracheal rings are going to be depicted by the blue rings right here. And they go almost all the way around but not quite. And just remember that they're the same as, they're not the same cartilage but they are cartilage. So cartilage, cartilage and then those tracheal rings are going to be cartilage. And then the annular ligaments are going to be depicted by the white. And those will go all the way around. 
The next concept is going to be the primary bronchi and secondary bronchi and tertiary bronchi. Now on this model, you really can't say which one is going to be which of all these, but the concept goes off of your trachea you're going to have primary bronchi, off of those primary bronchi you'll have secondary bronchi, and then off of those secondary you will have tertiary bronchi. So they just keep splitting more and more and more. But you really can't see it on here so make sure you refer to your book to see that. Alright, so next we will go over the lungs and how many lobes they have. So on your right side, you will have three lobes. That will be superior lobe, the middle lobe, and the inferior lobe down here. And on your left, there will be just a superior lobe up here and then an inferior lobe down here. The reason why there's only two on the left side is due to the fact that the heart takes up more of the chest or the thoracic cavity on that left side, so that left lung is a little bit smaller than that right lung. The next term will be called your hilus. The hilus is just where all of your arteries and then on the lung, the airways, will go in and out of the lungs. So that's going to be right here where everything goes in and out. And that is the same on every organ. The hilus is where everything goes in and out. The next concept is going to be the pleural cavity and what encompasses it. This is kind of a tough subject, so you will have to refer to your uh, lab TAs for more clarification. But on top of the lung, you have what's called visceral pleura. And then there's a sheath on top of that, which is called your parietal pleura. And that also is in contact with your outside wall of your or your inside wall of your thoracic cage. Between those, there's serous fluid and it forms a serous membrane. And that causes surface tension. And then when you breathe, that causes your lungs to expand and contract. So that's actually how you breathe. So make sure you go over that in lab.